What up, nomads? In this video, I'm sharing my best tips for packing for a business trip, whether that's attending or presenting at a conference, visiting the headquarters of the company you work for, or just an offsite meetup with some of your colleagues. I've been there and done that multiple times, and I have opinions about how to prep. So now that we're seeing an uptick in business travel post pandemic, I wanted to share my best tips and tricks for how to pack a functional and professional looking capsule wardrobe for whatever your business trip has in store. Let's go. This video is a bit long and full of tips because I wanted to make sure I covered multiple scenarios and seasons in my tips and tricks for business travel. If you wanna read these tips and save them for later, I've typed up the contents of this video, plus all the links that you would need into a blog post over on capsulesuitcase.com. My first piece of advice is to really unpack, pun intended, what workwear means to you and what the phrase dressing professionally inspires. I believe that as a society, we're kind of past that strict corporate and at times sexist and racist norms for traditional business attire. In fact, the pandemic has pushed us even closer to reaching a talent over appearances workplace dynamic. And thank goodness. More and more traditional industries are adopting flexible, modern workplace practices that include a change in wardrobe expectations. That being said, I would be naive if I said that how you dress in a business context doesn't matter, but how it matters is a wide spectrum and what you want your clothes to say about you is also a personal decision. Let me give a few examples. If you're a construction worksite supervisor, you need to dress for that job. Show up without your steel toe boots and your hard hat. Not only do you look underprepared and lose credibility, but you likely won't even be allowed on the construction site. You can take that example and apply it to any industry. I can give all the business casual advice until I'm blue in the face, but you know your industry best. If your profession calls for a certain uniform, follow that advice first. Using your work outfits to send a message can feel like advice from the 80s, when power suits for women were a way to assert your place in a male-dominated workplace. But to this day, women are picked apart for their choices, especially professionally. Too feminine, not feminine enough, too sexy, too old lady. It seems we can't win. So my advice here is to not get too wrapped up in appearances, but to think about your unique business context and to use your outfit like a tool. Are you the creative director at your company? What do you want your clothes to say about your taste and personal creative aesthetic? If there are a few people at work who kind of look like you, how can you use your clothes to stand out in an important meeting? But more important than anything, what gives you confidence? For some people, it's a look that's more subdued but sharp, and for others, it might be a louder outfit. Whatever gives you confidence, lean into that. A lot of the fashion advice I'm going to give in this video is specific to a Western context. If you're going to Japan or the United Arab Emirates on a business trip, for example, do look up their business norms and expectations and get advice from someone who has more experience in that specific country and cultural context. All right, if you came here for specific fashion and packing advice, here we are. As with any trip, my first step is to look at weather, activities, the vibe, and trip length. Weather is fairly easy to plan for if you check in advance. The important factor here is always how much of this weather will I be exposed to. If you're flying in, taking a cab to the hotel, and staying in a convention center the entire trip, you can get away with almost anything. But if your business trip involves a team building scavenger hunt outside, you'll want to know that kind of thing in advance. So make sure as you check weather forecasts, you have a good handle on what your itinerary will include. In a business context, packing for summer weather can be tricky. If you'll be spending most of your time indoors, air conditioning can impact your choice of clothes. When I travel to the US, I'm always shocked at how hot it is outside and how cold it is inside. So be warned that that might affect how you pack. For the vibe, it's just a matter of knowing how casual or formal you're expected to dress. This comes down to your individual role and industry and the purpose of your trip. 
I work in tech, so it's very casual. That being said, I still have important meetings when I go on business trips, so I try to present myself and the company well. There's also often a sightseeing activity, so I make sure to bring at least one pair of comfortable shoes and dress for the outdoors. The reason why I mention trip length as a factor is that length really impacts whether or not I need to check a bag, how many cosmetics to bring, and I usually adjust my packing strategy to have more outfit combinations, which can mean an extra pair of shoes too, when a trip is longer than a week. Okay, let's move on to the footwear you'll need for a business trip. I'm personally not the biggest wearer of heels, so if I'm true to myself, I would recommend a block or a wedge heel or something comfortable like a booty if you do wanna wear heels. If you like dresses and tights in the fall and winter, I'd recommend a tall boot for added warmth. The only thing is that with tall boots, it's likely that you're gonna have to wear the boots on travel days because packing that size of a shoe in your suitcase without crushing them and damaging them can take up a lot of space. So just be warned. But boots in general are such a chic and comfortable option. On my last two business trips, I packed one pair of flat boots and those were my only shoes for the entire trip. They were chic enough for the boardrooms, but comfortable enough for sightseeing. If you're looking for a non-boot option that's comfortable, but gives you a little bit of height, I find that platform brogues are a really great choice. I've had a few pairs over the years of varying heights and styles, and I find that they always work really well with casual and more fancy professional outfits. For spring and summer, other than brogues, I really like loafers, which can come in all sorts of different styles from trendy to classic and streamlined. I also recommend a smart flat as a great option for business travel. Pointed toe or almond toe flats can feel a little dressier than round toe, but to me what sets a business flat apart from a casual flat is the condition that it's in. So if you're packing flats, pick ones that are in good shape. That doesn't mean that they have to be rigid and uncomfortable. There are lots of brands making knit flats or soft leather models that pack into a tiny pouch. For summer workwear outfits, I'm just gonna share my own personal preference, which is typically not to wear sandals. I rarely wear sandals when I'm flying or traveling by train and pretty much never in a business setting. So on a business trip, they would not be my first choice. But if you love them, I'd follow the same advice as for flats. Make sure they're a more substantial shoe than flip-flops and in good shape. And make sure that your toenails look good too. I've also seen a lot of high-heeled sandals that look comfortable and look great in a business-appropriate setting. And I've seen lots of outfits on Pinterest that style them really nicely as well. As far as color and specific styles for footwear, I'd say go nuts and pick the things that suit you and your personal style. As long as you're comfortable and aren't trying to go tour a factory and open toe stilettos, there's a wide margin for you to work with and it's a good opportunity to show off a little bit of your personal style. Now, are sneakers a good option for business travel? Probably in most cases. If you have a clean, simple pair, there are lots of ways to style them in workwear appropriate ways, especially with wide leg trousers where you really won't see that much of the shoe anyway. If you're concerned at all about winter slush when traveling for business in the winter, or you just wanna keep your shoes clean in general on a trip, you can bring a mini shoe shine kit or boot wipes to make sure that they always look great for the entire length of your trip. Last thing I'll say about footwear when packing for a business trip is to consider other footwear you might need like running shoes to use in the hotel gym, flip-flops for the pool or spa, or slippers if you like to bring your own from home. Also make sure that when you do pack your shoes, you put them in some sort of packing cube or in a bag so that they don't dirty anything else in your suitcase. Now, this isn't a video specifically about packing for one season, so bear with me as I go through recommendations for every season, starting with winter. So unless it's bitter cold and there's blizzards, in which case the parka is really your only choice, my top pick for a business trip coat is really just a lovely structured wool coat and even a blanket coat version of this can work really well. For added warmth, I always recommend adding a small down vest underneath because it adds so much warmth without the bulk and typically you can't even see it. So it's just hidden like that. For more tips for packing for fall and winter, I have two videos that I recommend that I'll link below. 
For more mild weather, a pea coat, a blazer, or even a leather or denim jacket can be great choices. Traditionally though, trench coats and mat coats or car coats are probably the most business appropriate type of coat. Um, but these days, trench coats can come in all sorts of modern cuts and styles and colors and fabrics. They can be drapey or structured. They can be made of leather. They can be printed, waxed cotton, vinyl. So if you have a trench coat that you love, great, use it. And if you're in the market for one, you have lots of choices that will work for business outfits and the rest of your wardrobe. So you can pick something that really speaks to you. Let's talk about blazers really quickly because when it comes to workwear, I think blazers are kind of an instant outfit maker. You can pair this with jeans, trousers, even like Bermuda shorts, and it instantly makes an outfit feel a little bit more polished. Personally, I actually don't bring blazers a lot when I travel or travel for business. Um, I think it's just kind of my personal style. Um, and also I feel like they can be a little stiff. And if I'm traveling in the winter, if I have to put a coat over top of the blazer, I feel a little restricted. But for fall and spring, I love blazers and I think you can really style them as outerwear if they're a little bit oversized and you put them on top of a sweater. Um, so yeah, blazers come in all sorts of cuts and fabrics and uh, colors. So if you have one already in your wardrobe that you love, you can style it with the rest of your wardrobe. And if you're looking to invest in one, I would say take your time, find one that you're really in love with and um, one that fits the rest of your wardrobe and fits your personal style and body type. In the summertime, you can swap out kind of the darker hues and prints for a linen blazer in a light color. On the extreme ends, I've also seen some silk blazers and some leather blazers. These can be a little bit trickier to pack though because for linen and silk, for example, you might need to bring a steamer and make sure you have one on location. Um, and leather can be a little bit heavy. But other than that, I think my top fabric for blazers would be some sort of wool blend. It's got that wool for just like a beautiful like fit and feeling and then a little bit of polyester so it just kind of retains its shape when you're traveling. If you want some tips on how to pack your blazers so that you don't damage them, I have a video all about how to pack formal wear with some specific tips for suit jackets and blazers. Now I've never purchased a full matching blazer and trousers combo suit myself, but I love the way that it looks. And honestly, for business travel, coordinated sets in general can give you a lot of flexibility for mixing and matching. You can pair the pieces with other items to increase the number of outfit combinations and then put them together for a really strong look. This spring, vests are coming back, especially with matching trousers. It's got like a very Diane Keaton look to it. I mean, this not this one specifically, but um, in like a linen or a cream colored, it's great. And the nice thing about vests is that when you layer it over like a more sheer top, it gives you just the right modesty and coverage. And in the summertime, if you wear this as a top, it can give like a business feel to a tank top. So I think vests are another really underrated item for business travel. On to trousers, which is probably my personal MVP pick for business travel. I love trousers and they really suit my personality and style. I'd say this is another investment piece and finding the one that suit your style, body, and the climate that you live in is well worth the time and money. Personally, my favorite trousers are wool blend and tend to sit high on the waist. Some of the trousers I wear the most are actually a wide leg style in like a polyester blend because they're so comfortable. And well, these ones maybe not, but a lot of them are wrinkle resistant. So I don't need to fuss about making sure I pack a travel iron or that there's one at the hotel I'm staying at. I have a blog post all about trousers and what fabrics to choose for the optimal travel pants. In a nutshell, there are several brands making more technical trousers like Lululemon and their sister brand Kit and Ace, which are crease resistant, stain resistant, good for golfing, biking, and travel, and so much more. Their merino wool pants are also great for winter and wool is antimicrobial and dries really fast in case you need to wash your pants in the sink at your hotel. If you pick a pair of pants that is like looser around the waist, uh, trousers can also be a great option for travel days. 
They're more chic than jeans and more comfortable. More and more offices are allowing jeans, not just on casual Fridays, but all the time. For travel, I would recommend something with a bit more stretch and something that is a little bit looser cut for travel days. And especially if your business trip will involve long hours seated in meetings. But as long as there aren't any tears and distressing or like acid wash jeans, I think denim can be super office appropriate, especially white, black and gray denim. Just like the neutral colorways can be really stylish. So you've got pants, you've got a blazer, but what about tops? Depending on the length of the trip, I tend to pack a bit of everything for tops. I have my favorite merino wool or silk tanks and t-shirts that just go under everything. I tend to run hot, like it doesn't take much for me to overheat, hot weather, stress, indoor heating, embarrassment. So I really like natural fibers as my preferred base layer. Blouses are obviously a classic office wear look. Button up, dramatic sleeve, jewel tone. This is another place to get creative. If you do opt for thinner blouses, make sure that you roll them to avoid creasing or do pack a travel steamer. And this is true for linen tops as well. You can also get creative with layering your tops. If it's winter time, a thin turtleneck can go under anything, even a blouse. You can also pick a printed blouse and just have the collar peek out under a dress or a sweater. That's a combination that I used to wear a ton. Sweaters are another great top to pack for warmth and for style. I like packing a mix of thick and thin ones. Thin cardigans can be great for air conditioned offices in the summertime, or they can be styled as a top on their own or even under a sleeveless dress as an extra layering piece. Let's talk dresses and skirts. You don't have to be afraid of packing dresses and skirts on a business trip. Just make sure that you have coordinated your shoes and if it's cold that you pack good tights that don't run the risk of tearing or running while you're on your business trip. My personal favorite is a brand called Sheertex and they are pretty much indestructible. So you don't have to worry about having some sort of emergency or mishap on your trip. Some of my favorite versatile dresses are the midi length slip dresses, especially when worn with like a tall boot and with a thin turtleneck underneath. I just think they look so good. And I also love sweater dresses, wrap dresses, shirt dresses. I would steer away from like the shorter dresses just because it's not that they're inappropriate, um, but it's just that they can read a little young. And so depending on the vibe of your business uh, trip and what you're trying to convey, I would just prefer a little bit of a longer hemline. But the fun thing about styling dresses is that they can double as a like a cardigan or they can also be kind of like a gilet vest that you can wear over pants as another option for styling. For summertime, a sleeveless dress can be totally appropriate for business, but just make sure that it covers your bra strap. And if you feel like it's gonna be a little chilly because of air conditioning, do bring like a light blazer or a jacket or a cardigan. And if it's really hot on the flip side, you might consider putting a slip underneath your dress because that can just help it be a little bit breezier and not have your sweat cling to you. And also make sure that you have the appropriate underwear and undergarments for the dress that you're packing. All right, with the theory out of the way, let's cover some frequent business travel dilemmas. First, how to pack for a business trip in hot weather. Well, I think long sleeve blouses and trousers can be great for hot summer weather when they're in a linen fabric. Bermuda shorts are also an appropriate style for summer office looks and Pinterest has a ton of inspiration on ways to style shorts for the office. Second dilemma, I have several parties, dinners, and drinks planned in the context of my business trip, but I'm not sure how to be work appropriate and still fun and dressed up. I love this question. And for me, the key is bringing blouses and dresses that can go from day to evening, then swapping out your accessories. During the day, you may wanna keep your jewelry low key and you might also have a large tote bag with your computer and your planner. In the evening, try styling your look with a statement jewelry piece 
and swap out your tote for a clutch instead. You can also just do slightly more dramatic makeup. Third dilemma, I have to lug so much around, but I don't wanna wear a backpack. What do you suggest? I don't know if you've watched the Sex and the City reboot, but gosh, Miranda got so much flack for her backpack and I get it. Backpacks can just be bulky outfit ruiners. Instead, I'd recommend a chic tote bag. And that can range from a leather one to a nylon one, nylon being slightly lighter, and there's definitely a spectrum to choose from. Find one that has all the functionality that you need, but that you will also love to use outside of an office context. Kuyana makes some beautiful totes with organizing inserts that can fit a laptop, so I'd recommend checking those out. Next dilemma, how do you make sure your clothes look great after hours of travel? This all starts with choosing the right travel fabrics and then packing them carefully. If your hotel has an iron, great, use it. Make sure you unpack as soon as you arrive at your hotel so your clothes spend some time possibly decrumpling in the closet. I'd also recommend packing cubes for your shoes and keeping delicates packed away from Velcro and zippers. For more delicate items, you can also invest in a garment bag that clips into your suitcase, just like the away garment bag. If you really wanna be prepared, a small sewing kit, a lint roller, a crease release spray, and anti-static spray can help your outfits look impeccable. Next dilemma, my office clothes are boring. How do you make cool outfits for work? Pinterest and Instagram, baby. You probably have lots of hidden gems already in your closet, but need a little inspiration. I like using the More Ideas tab in Pinterest to find more styles in line with my personal taste. Sometimes it's about a fresh idea on layering or seeing color combinations I hadn't thought of or seeing how people style head to toe monochromatic looks. I find magazine editors especially or women who run a creative business to be pretty inspiring in terms of business appropriate looks. The last few tips I'd say for business travel are to make sure you have clean chip free nails and to think about some hair and makeup styles before leaving so you can plan whether to bring hair tools like a flat iron or your blow dryer. I'm terrible with hair. So for short trips, I have gotten a blowout before leaving or right when I landed. And I just stretched out that style for the length of my trip. So I had a good hair day every day. Something to think about. And that's it. Those are my major tips for business travel. I hope these were helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have more questions about your specific business trip needs. And please remember to subscribe and turn on notifications for more travel and packing tips like these. Happy travels and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video until the end. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the capsule suitcase and turn on notifications so you get all the fresh content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for supporting this channel. Happy travels.